Hello there, Thrill Seekers, and today I want to talk to you about Dogen's Thousands of Eyes. This is kind of the, the kind of thing maybe the ghoul would have shown on one of his movies. Uh, Dogen's Thousands of Eyes. Sounds like uh, the Thousand Eyes of Dogen. Sounds like a title that might come up on one of his uh, shows, like as one of the movies. But it isn't. It is a favorite section of a chapter called Mujo Seppo. This is by Dogen. And here's the Nishiyama and Stevens et al. version. And they translate it as the proclamation of the law by inanimate beings. Uh, often the word mujo is typically translated as insentient. Here they use the word inanimate. Uh, Nishijima and Cross use the word non-emotional because if you take the two Chinese characters of Mu Zhou apart, you could interpret them as non-emotion, without emotion. And there, you can see it. They call it non-emotional preach the Dharma. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. And even they are not totally consistent. Even though they titled it non-emotional preaches the Dharma, they sometimes translate Mu Zhou as insentient or inanimate. And here's what they say in the intro. Mujo means the non-emotional and seppo means preach the Dharma. Originally, Mujo means inanimate or insentient beings. So Mujo seppo means inanimate things preach the Dharma. But Master Dogen's usage of the word Mujo was wider than the usual usage, as if the words cover the whole of nature, human beings as well as mountains, rivers, and so on. Master Dogen insisted that even inanimate things can preach the Dharma. And at the same time, he insisted that human beings can preach the Dharma when they are not emotional. He insisted that anything that is not emotional can preach the Dharma, a viewpoint that profoundly expresses the true nature of Buddhist preaching. So that is the overall message of the piece. But the part I like is the part about eyes. So let me, before I read you that part, let me tell you a little bit about eyes. Here's a footnote in Mujo Seppo written by, I suppose, uh, Mike Cross with Nishijima Roshi's input. It goes, in general, ears represent intellectual understanding, whereas eyes represent intuitive understanding the, or the viewpoint of real experience. And generally speaking, I'm going to look at my own article that I wrote, which I have some notes about this in here. Uh, according to Nishijima Roshi, Dogen uses the word I or eyes to indicate a state of experience, perception, or intuition. That's my interpretation based on various footnotes and things in his writings. And I give the example, uh, he uh, talks about eyes of learning or eyes of learning in practice. In Shoaku Makusa, which I uh, titled Don't Be a Jerk in my book, Don't Be a Jerk, he talks about vigorous eyes, which he says exist in the sun and the moon. In an essay called Bukyo, which means the Buddha's teaching, he says that the phrase the Buddha's mind means the Buddha's eye. And in an essay called Kokyo, the eternal mirror, he says that mind and eyes are alike. So he's using this word eyes in this really interesting metaphorical sense. And here is the, the quote that I really like that I keep coming back to over and over again. So I'm going to read you, I would normally read you the Nishijima cross version, but I'm going to try the Kosen Nishiyama version today. And I just compared them just before I started the video, and they're more or less the same. There's ju just a couple of points where they differ. So the, the translations are, are just about the same. And I, I, I actually, in this case, tend to prefer the Nishiyama version to the Nishijima version. Sorry, Nishijima Roshi, wherever you are. Here's the quote. An ancient worthy said, so an ancient Buddhist master said, the entire world of the ten directions, that means the whole universe, the entire world of the ten directions is in the eye of a monk. So remember, I is this sort of metaphorical sense, the, the intuition, the viewpoint, the, the, yeah, something like that. When sound is heard through this single eye, do not think that it is the same as Tozan's. And we won't worry about who Tozan is, uh, but Tozan, okay, we will worry a little bit. Uh, earlier in the essay, he says uh, Tozan has a, a um, quote that says, listening to sound through the eye. And as I said, the, the thing about eyes and ears, that uh, footnote I just gave you before, that's what that's referring to. So let's continue. 
Hearing the sound through the eye, we should learn that this ancient worthies, the entire world of the ten directions is in the eye, means that the entire world is this single eye. Still, there are thousands of eyes of the hands, thousands of eyes of the true law, thousands of eyes of the ears, thousands of eyes of the tongue, thousands of eyes of the mind, thousands of eyes that pierce the mind, thousands of eyes that pierce the body. And let me just uh, tell you how Nishima and Cross translate that bit, because I thought it was interesting. That's the part where it really uh, gets a little different. They translate it as uh, thousands of eyes of the thoroughly realized mind and thousands of eyes of the thoroughly realized body. That's how they translate. So it's probably, I would assume, in Japanese, without going back and checking it, that it is literally pierced. But um, thoroughly realized is how they... Uh, how Nishijima and Cross, my teacher and his uh, student, my Cross, chose to interpret it. So, thousands of eyes that pierce the mind, thousands of eyes that pierce the body. Uh, thousands of eyes on top of a staff, thousands of eyes before there was a body, thousands of eyes before there was a mind, thousands of eyes of death within death, thousands of eyes of life within life, thousands of eyes of the self, Thousands of eyes of others, sorry, there was a little typo in there. It should say thousands of eyes of the self, but it says thousands of self, so it's a typo. Uh, thousands of eyes of study, thousands of vertical eyes, and thousands of horizontal eyes. Therefore, study that the unlimited eye is the unlimited world, but realize that we can never totally penetrate the eye. It is essential in our study to hear the sound of the proclamation of the law by inanimate beings, that's mujo, through the eye. The point of Tozan's expression is that although it is difficult to hear the proclamation of the law by inanimate beings through the ear, it can be heard through the eye. So that just sounds crazy, right? But I think it's really interesting, and it's something that ever since I first came across that passage, you know, 20 odd years ago, or maybe more than 20 years ago, certainly I heard it from Nishijima Roshi, but I might have even read it before that. It's really stuck with me as something that I, I want to understand. And I'll give you a few ways that I've understood it. One of them is as a a very strong proclamation of the Buddhist philosophy of the non-difference of animate and inanimate. So the, we have the idea that there is sentient and insentient, animate and inanimate, uh, emotional and non-emotional, if you want to say that that way, things. So there, this, uh, this computer that I'm talking to right now is an inanimate, inanimate object or an insentient object, but the person uh, out there, the unknown people, the unknown, you know, one or two thousand people who listen to my videos each time are animate objects. You folks out there who I, I, I'm not even talking to yet because right now I'm just talking to the machine, but, you know, in, in 20 minutes it'll go out to a bunch of people. Uh, those are animate. But to Dogen, that doesn't matter. You know, the, the, the difference is not there. There are thousands of eyes within this laptop. Dogen didn't know about laptops, but I'm sure he would have included laptops in among his, his thousands of eyes. And there are thousands of eyes in those plants behind me and in the bugs and things that live among those plants and in the sticks and in the, that uh, piece of wood over there. There's uh, eyes there. You know, there's, there's eyes all over in this plastic chair that I'm sitting in and, and everywhere else. So everything is alive. Everything is a manifestation of the same life that you experience now as yourself. You know, you being the substitute, the unknown person I'm talking to. We experience life as being within ourselves. I, I, I am alive. I know I'm alive, right? But uh, I don't think that mop over there is alive. See, folks? There's a mop. That's what I'm pointing to. So I don't think that mop is alive, but I think I'm alive. Dogen might disagree. Dogen might say the mop is as alive as I am. So that's one of the, the things that he's saying there. He's also saying that this stuff is preaching the Dharma, 
but that we have to be able to hear it in order to know that it is preaching the Dharma. Elsewhere in this essay, he says there, there, there are dummies who think that uh, rustling of leaves and babbling of brooks or something like that is, is preaching the Dharma, but they don't hear it. This actually closely relates to the thing I've been doing my podcast about. There's a little plug for my podcast called Hardcore Zen the Podcast. Find it wherever podcasts are, are podcasted. Uh, that's what I've been talking about in Yui Butsu Yobutsu, Buddhas Alone Together with Buddhas. He says Buddhas, only Buddhas together with Buddhas can hear the Dharma or, or can uh, understand the Dharma. Anyway, so he says something. But that on, only Buddhas means when we develop the capacity to understand it, then we can say that they are, they are preaching it. Now, there's another little exchange in this that I'm going to read to you from the Nishijima and Cross version, which I think is cute. National Master Daisho of uh, Something Temple and wherever he is, uh, the story goes, is asked by a monk, can the insentient really preach the Dharma or not? The National Master says, they are always preaching ardently. They preach without interval. The monk says, why do I not hear it? The National Master says, whether or not you hear it yourself, you should not disturb others who hear it. The monk says, I wonder what kind of person is able to hear it. The National Master says, saints are able to hear it. The monk says, does the master hear it or not? Do you hear it or not? Hey, National Master. The National Master says, I do not hear it. The monk says, if the master himself does not hear it, how does he know that the insentient preach the Dharma? The national master says, it is convenient that I do not hear it. If I heard it, I would be on the level of the saints. Then you would not be able to hear me preaching the Dharma. The monk says, so living beings are without the means to hear? The national master says, I preach for living beings. I do not preach for saints. The monk says, what are living beings like after they hear? The national master says, at that time, they are beyond living beings. So that's an interesting little dialogue there that also sheds some light on this whole idea. If the master could hear it, then he wouldn't be able to, he, the, the monk would not, he would be on the level of saints, and then the monk would not be able to, to hear him, because the monk would not be able to hear the preaching of the saint. So the master is sort of intermediary between it. And Dogen even calls into question whether that understanding, he seems to uh, admit that that way of understanding the story is viable is a, is, a, is a useful way of understanding it, but he also says we shouldn't think that the master didn't hear the preaching of the insentient, but at the moment that he conveys it to the student, he is he's not talking from the level of the one who hears the preaching of the insentient, which is real interesting because you get the master that you get, <laughs> and I've said this on this channel before. Uh, some people have this idea that, and and I, I I you know I admit to being one of these people sometimes that I'm I, who why, why should I listen to anybody but the greatest master of all time you know I don't want to listen to some you know measly little ungreat master I want to listen to the greatest master, but you may not be able to hear it. I may not be ready to hear it. I may not be able to hear what the greatest master of all time, the one who preaches to the saints, says. And, and I know this for a fact, because I know that there were things that I heard early in my practice that just went, you know, might as well have been, you know, Greek, as, as we say in English. Uh, apologies to anybody out there who, who happens to speak Greek and be listening to this, but that's, you know, it's all Greek to me is one of these phrases. And a, I, one of my bosses in Japan, uh, Ugawa-san, was really fond of that phrase. It's, it's all Greek to me. Uh, he used to love to use that phrase. You know, maybe the equivalent in, in Asia would be it's all Korean to me if you don't understand Korean. Let, let's forget about that. But maybe that's, maybe that's useful, you know, it's all Greek to me, you can't understand it unless you understand Greek, you know. It, it, it may be a, a level that, that uh, I am not able to understand or I'm not ready to understand, which is one of the reasons I keep coming back to Dogen's works over and over and over again. I read them again and again, I've read them for, for 30 or more years, you know, I don't know, 30, 40 years that I've read Dogen's works again and again, the same damn, you know, book again and again. 
because Dogen was on such a high level that it's it's difficult for me to hear it until I get a little bit more grounded in it, and that's an important thing, and uh, and I just think this is really great, and the thousands of eyes in everything, you know, of course, being the science fiction fanatic that I am, and you know, fan of uh, the Ghoul, the Ghoul. I don't know if I said this at the beginning. He was a, a horror movie host who went on TV late at night back in Ohio and Michigan too, and uh, and talked about uh, and showed weird all horror movies with titles like Dogen's Thousands of Eyes or whatever. So that's that's interesting stuff for me, and I just thought I'd spend a little time talking about it. And uh, there you go. Those are Dogen's thousands of eyes. And I'm thinking, actually, I haven't decided whether I'll do this or not, but I'm thinking maybe my next podcast will be about Mujo Seppo, because reading it uh, today, I just realized it really is similar to some of the stuff that was in Yuibutsu Yobutsu, which is uh, what I just did my last series about. I'm pretty sure I did a trans not translation what was I calling it paraphrase of Mujo Seppo in my book uh, it came from beyond Zen I think it's in there uh, but I don't have a copy of it came from beyond Zen here to, to check and see if it was in there pretty sure it was in there anyway there you go that's uh, Dogen's thousands of eyes and I hope that scared you <laughs> Uh, well, scary time is over. Now it's Thanksgiving time pretty soon. So anyway, I hope you're thankful for that. Anyway, if you want to know how to enable me to buy more eyes, since I'm a four eyes and I need to get, you know, uh, spare glasses and stuff. Actually, I've got two spares right now, which is really nice because usually I've only got one one pair. Thank you for helping me be able to do that. And if you, if you want to contribute to me being able to do more stuff like that, Go to the URL you're seeing below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are my main and usually only way of making a living. And I really appreciate your support. But as always, this is offered for free. So you don't got to pay if you don't want to pay. We will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Beisels. Easy. Do you have thousands of eyes, or do you have just two eyes? Or are you looking for other things with your little doggy eyes? Ooh, what's that? Go see, go see what that is. I don't know. <laughs>